everyone and welcome to Armstrong in the Loop podcast. I'm Seth Prentice. Today I am joined by Ron Carter of The Strand and Zelian Opal. Ron, welcome to the show. Thanks very much for having me. Ron, your theater has been a landmark here in the Zelian Opal community for many years. Talk to us about the history, a little brief history about The Strand. Sure. Well, The Strand was built back in 1914, uh, so it's over 100 years old. And it uh, was a classic one-screen movie theater. Uh, when it first opened up, it was both live and cinema. It was a silent film house. It had a uh, piano player, and the rumor goes that she only knew like, she only knew like one or two songs, which you would just speed up or slow down based on what was happening <laughs> in the movie at the time. But it was also like it also had a small stage for vaudeville-type programs, and uh, it, and it did its first renovation in 1939. That's when the marquee was added, and it was dedicated strictly to film. And then it closed sometime in the early to mid-80s. We don't have an exact date, uh, but it's had emptying and deep decay for over 20 years. Wow. Uh, The nonprofit Strain Theater Initiative was created in 2001. We spent eight years raising two and a half million dollars to renovate the space. And we reopened the theater on July 16th of 2009. So it's now been just over 10 years that the theater has been renovated and welcoming patrons through its doors. We've had such household names as Debbie Reynolds perform there, John Oates of Hall & Oates, the Celtic Tenors, um, Ricky Nelson's twin sons, Matthew and Gunnar, have played there, and any number of Broadway stars over the course of years with our Broadway on Main series. That's incredible. How did everyone get together to reopen the Strand after it sitting empty for that long? Because you take a look and say, it had to have been almost blight at that point. Very much so, as a matter of fact. Uh, I I discovered the theater quite by accident. We had recently moved back to the area. I had been working in New York City for Foot Locker in their marketing department for years, and I came back to home to take a job with American Eagle Outfitters and didn't really know anything about Zillion Opal. And uh, my oldest son, who is now 25, (laughs) uh, I was taking him to flag football practice at the Seneca Valley campus, and we drove by the, the Strand, and it caught my attention and did a little some research and understanding of the need of this growing area needing a cultural venue and and cultural attractions and formed the board of directors and found some people that share the vision but it's always much more than one person but i spearheaded the operation and it's been my pleasure and my privilege to not only could see the theater reopen, but manage its operations since we opened the theater 10 years ago. Oh, the, uh, congratulations to you and your volunteers, which I know you're always looking for volunteers, and we'll get that. Yes, we are, in fact, always looking for volunteers. <laughs> and if you'd like to become a Strand volunteer, you can go to the strandtheater.org. <laughs> and, and we'll uh, definitely highlight that before we end today. Uh, you know, with the Zealian Opal community and the businesses growing to the town, you know, 2020, I really think is going to be that landmark year of Zealian Opal is one of those destination areas, if it isn't already. Uh, but the Strand has a large impact of why that's been able to happen. Well, that was part of the vision early on, is realizing that, you know, it's always a, a noble effort to try to renovate a theater or re- bring it back as, as it could be be a contributor to local economy and commerce and things like that. But the Strand in particular, because of Zillion Opal's location, it's always been a great little town. And the, and, the, and it's not like it's had to suffer through some of the smaller Main Street America towns like Manaka and places like that that have had their storefronts closed and things like that. The town's pretty much been vibrant its, its entire existence. Still, we knew there was a lot more potential there. Um, and honestly, you take a look at towns like Lawrenceville and Sewickley yeah. and some of these hip urban towns that have, that have grown over the course of time, the arts contribute to that. And so when we first looking at the Strand and Zillian very convenient location right off of I-79, you, it's probably the easiest venue that you can get to. Um, that was very much a contributing factor to, to seeing the vision uh, realized. And you're realizing it every single day and week and month. <laughs> uh, and let's talk about your show schedule because you're bringing people to this area, you know, 365 days a year. But most importantly, people want to come during the holidays. Absolutely. Christmas, like any other uh, business time of year, is certainly the most popular. Um, not only are families looking to find great gifts and, and, and create the, the perfect Christmas, but they want to have these experiences. 
and the Strand is more than happy to provide those types of services. We do a whole wide variety of holiday-themed programming, both live and cinema. Uh, but in fact, the Strand is the only venue in North Pittsburgh that both presents and produces professional theater arts. Wow. No other venue does that. And so we are very happy to do that. And a great example is we are bringing in the Ladshaw Pops Orchestra for a very lavish Christmas spectacular on Saturday, November 30th. We follow that up. If you're familiar with Chris Jamison from The Voice, yeah, uh, we've been working with him for the last year or so. He, he's kind of fallen in love with the space, which is great. Um, he first came to us last summer and did a concert and then followed it up in the fall when he had a new CD release. And now he's doing his Christmas shows at The Strand, and we're doing it Thursday and Friday, December 5th and 6th. And December 5th is particularly significant because that's also Zillion Opal's Miracle on Main Street event. And we participated in that event over the last couple of years by doing a, a holiday-themed film. But this year, I really want to do something very unique and very different. And so having somebody of Chris Jamison's caliber appearing on Main Street for the Strand uh, with the Christmas with Chris Jamison concert is really just something special. So we're very excited about that. And one of our most wonderful group of uh, people we've brought in is the, the Celtic Tenors. Mm. We first were introduced to the Celtic Tenors back in 2011 with a Christmas concert that we booked uh, back then. And they became so popular that they wanted to do more of, of a, a greater variety of music. So we moved to the springtime. And they started selling out one and two and even three shows when we, when, when we would book them. But people kept asking me, when are you having the Celtic tenors back for Christmas? So I spoke with their <laughs> booking agent, and we were, they were happy to come back for Christmas. And the original date was Sunday, December 8th. That one sold out so quickly, we added a, we added a second date, which is Tuesday, December 10th. And that one's nearly sold out. Wow. So the Celtic tenors are, are just, they are the most successful classical crossover group ever to come from Ireland. And we're very excited to have them uh, join us for that. But again, we also produce professional theater arts. And at Christmas time, we have two shows that we produce that you cannot find anywhere else. We are, they are written and performed, especially for the Strand Theater and Strand audiences. One is called Yule TV's Greatest Hits. <laughs> now, if you remember the music growing up from those great Christmas TV specials of the 1960s and 70s, you know, shows like Rudolph and Frosty and yeah. How the Grinch Sold Christmas, but also things like Year Without a Santa Claus, and Santa Claus is Coming to Town. Well, we created a show that celebrates the music of all those fantastic shows that people grew up with. And it's built as a family show. We price it as a family show so that parents can bring their kids to show them this is the kind of thing that I grew up with. And it's a great live event. It's very family friendly. It's kid friendly. It's very fast paced. And that is on December 13th and 14th. So that's on a Friday night Saturday afternoon, the same weekend, we have our most popular show that we produce every year called It's a USO Christmas. And that is formatted on those famous USO shows of the 1940s and 50s, made famous by the likes of Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. So it's very much in that vein. It's a fictional cast, but it's all that kind of humor and vintage music, and people just love it. And we're very excited this particular year because we are now working directly with USO and a portion of the proceeds from the ticket sales of It's a USO Christmas will be donated to the USO. That's fantastic. Because we are very, very supportive of our troops mm -hmm. uh, at the Strange Theater Initiative, and we are more than happy to support organizations that support those troops. And then between all the live programming, some of the most popular Christmas movies you could ever want yep. to see back on the big screen. Uh, actually, starting in just a couple of weeks, we've got the famous film Holiday Inn which is from 1942, starring Bing Crosby. And people don't realize that the very first time people ever heard or saw White Christmas was not the movie White Christmas. <laughs> that was 12 years later. Holiday Inn was the, was the movie that made White Christmas famous, but it's based on all American holidays. So we kind of sneak an extra Christmas slash holiday movie in there um, by talking about Holiday Inn or presenting Holiday Inn, which is really just one of the all-time classics. But then we go full on Christmas. We have probably the most popular Christmas movie that we've ever produced, or I'm sorry, that we've ever presented, uh, The Polar Express. Families just love that film. They come every year. Uh, that's one of the, uh, the things that we're doing for Small Business Saturday, is oh, that uh, awesome. you know, there's a lot of excitement around that surrounds Small Business Saturday in these Main Street America towns. Zillion Opa was a great location to spend your Small Business Saturday. 
Uh, they're doing an ice sculpture this year, but the Strand is actually having two programs that day, the same day. So at two o'clock in the afternoon, you can see the Polar Express. And then later that evening is the Latchaw Pops Christmas Spectacular, The Sounds of Christmas. So we, we, we go all in for Small Business Saturday. Yeah, it sounds like it. Uh, and then we have uh, uh, another great favorite is Christmas Vacation, starring Chevy Chase. And then uh, at the very end of the month, we have probably the most popular Christmas movie ever, It's a Wonderful Life. Yeah, of course. December 20th through the 22nd. So there was just no shortage of great Christmas programming at the Strand. Now, and it, you have a wonderful schedule lined up. Ron, if people want to find out not only your holiday schedule, but to learn more about your shows, your movies, and everything else coming up at the Strand, what's the easiest way to go and find out that information? Easiest way, honestly, is once you get onto your favorite search engine page, most people use Google, but it's not the only one out there. You start typing in the Strand Theater Zillionopal, it'll bring up our website. The actual website address is the Strand Theater, and we spell it T H E A T E R dot org, and everything listed on the website. We have a very, very active Facebook page. A lot of our events are posted there. Uh, you're also welcome to send us messages or ask questions through the Facebook page or the email address that's on the website. It goes right to the executive director's inbox. So we're always happy to answer questions and talk about all the great things that are coming up. But you can also, as we mentioned earlier, if you go to thestrangetheater.org, there's a become a volunteer. And the Strand is always, always, always in need of volunteers. Because we are open every weekend and sometimes during the week, we are always in need of volunteers. The theater is run almost 100% by volunteer service. That's incredible. And that's everything from working concessions in the box office to ushering. We have special events that we do both on and off site all year long. It takes a lot of people to organize those events and to present them. And even though we have a very strong, dedicated volunteer base, we are always in need of people that are willing to help out because especially in the holiday season, people are very busy. So volunteerism is one of those things that people might have to sacrifice in order to make time for everything else. And we get that, but it's also the busiest time of the year for The Strand. So if you're interested in becoming a volunteer, then by all means, go to thestrandtheater.org, click on that Become a Volunteer, and we'll be happy to work with you and get you set up on our system. As students that might need volunteer hours for uh, National Honor Society or any uh, active uh, club or sport, can they also come? Do you have an age limit? The only age limit we really have is we like you to be 16 or older to be able to work in most of the positions like box office or in concessions. and In concessions, you actually have to be 18 because we have a liquor license. Um, but um, honestly, another option that, has, that some families have uh, pursued is if you're under 16, become a volunteer with your mom or dad. Ah. We've had entire families volunteer together as something that they can do together as a family, and it's, it helps the theater out because we get added staffing. So we've had mom and dad in concessions and the son or daughter in the, in the usher position, and it's worked out great for everybody. They get to do something that supports a local community, supports a charity, which we are. You mentioned the National Honor Society. Any hours you put toward the Strand Theater count towards volunteer service hours because we are a charity. So yes, there's, there's all kinds of different opportunities. And I can't let you go on this episode <laughs> without real briefly talking. You have a wonderful coffee shop right next door to the Strand. And I know it's been a huge benefit to the community. Well, thank you for mentioning that. Yes, we, uh, we own the building next door because eventually we want to be able to tear it down to expand the theater. Ah. That's part of our expansion plans. But in the meantime, we've been running it out for many years. And about a year and a half ago, there was a tenant in there that had a coffee and vaping shop. And shockingly, vaping didn't take off in this town. Uh, and that was their primary business. So we negotiated with them when they were moving out to take over the coffee shop because there was nothing better than a coffee shop next to a theater. So we moved the box office into the coffee shop. So it gave everybody more room, gave more people more room to come in and pick up their tickets and enjoy a nice cup of gourmet coffee. And we are indeed a gourmet coffee shop. We are, it's not just a local convenience store. We have all the ingredients and the different gourmet coffees and even loose leaf teas oh, wow. uh, that are available. And so if you want a latte or a cappuccino, we have a whole wide variety of different flavorings because I am on that keto diet, which is so restrictive as terms of sugar is concerned. We have a lot of sugar-free sweetener options. So it's, uh, it's really great to be able to, to provide that to the community. 
Well, Ron, you're doing an amazing job, as are your volunteers. I wish you the best of luck during the holiday season. We'll invite you back here to talk about 2020 and some of your seasonal opportunities and shows that people can look forward to. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate it. For Armstrong in the Loop podcast, I'm Seth Prentice, keeping you in the loop. Are you enjoying Armstrong in the Loop podcast? Great news! All past and current episodes are available on popular streaming apps and websites. Search Armstrong in the Loop podcast and subscribe today.